So this will be like the walkway that goes into the new area. Just wanted to show off what it looks like before it's fully done here. So I thought that I got footage for all this, but apparently I didn't. Uh, nobody tells you how difficult it is to make not only a YouTube video, but also build an aviary and take care of birds all at once. But anyways, uh, this video was 100 gigabytes of footage and hours and hours that I just had to sort through and put the most interesting bits up. So I wanted to record this here to kind of explain so you understand why there are branches in the middle. It's basically an anchor point that I wanted to have so that the branches could go across because it would just be impossible for me to really effectively put a branch all the way across and then be able to get around it and stuff. So this was the solution I came up with. This is before they, the hole was even dug or anything like that, but we do concrete them in later and then I forget to mention that they had been concreted in about midway through the video. So uh, I apologize if everything is a little like disoriented, but you know, it's, it, this has been a really overwhelming video to complete and I just hope that you guys enjoy it and if you enjoy the content, please take some time and consider uh, supporting us on Patreon or through channel memberships or super thanks or donation in the description to help us out with more aviary stuff in the future and to possibly bring in more rescues in the future. All right, so we've taken those big branches and we've post hole, used a post hole digger to get them in the ground there. We're gonna concrete those in probably either tomorrow or Tuesday. And same with this one, and that way we'll have a good anchor point in the middle for other perches and things like that. And they have a nice little tree area in the middle to get off over to. So, see you guys soon. All right, so last few days has been, well, we'll show you here. Chopping up branches with the old trusty hacksaw. As I said before, I got a, well you can't really see it as much now. It's mostly healed, but I got a nice blister on my thumb there. Got these in the ground. They still need concreted, but um, we got some packages in today, which I'm going to show you for uh, a good part of the rest of it. So, give me a sec. And an extension cable for the cameras and stuff. Uh, water hub thing. For the misters, the power washer and hose and all that good stuff. Hopefully you can hear me. Okay. Clamps for the rope. A little protector for that extension cord. More clamps for some reason. Oh, more kebabs because we needed more for the fruit. Um, hooks for the rope to secure it. Uh, misting, we're definitely gonna probably put that up for pull. Among one of the first things we're gonna do is that for sure. To, so I can turn that on. It's like 100 degrees out here. It has been for the past few weeks. Ugh. these to cut the rope. Outdoor power thing the jig extension cord. Got a heavier duty hose to run over here for water. And I believe this is the rope. Alright, rope. My hair is going to be getting in the way all the time now. <laughs> now what I'm going to do first, I guess run the water over here. <sighs> Put the misting system and stuff up first maybe. Now we didn't get, <clears throat> I would have preferred to get a misting system that was, um, had a water pump to increase the pressure, but um, they're just much too expensive for me to do right now. 
so we're going to settle for this for now and just see how it works out and in the future if we want to upgrade to a better uh, mister then we can but I think a pressurized one would be better for them because they tend to get kind of scared of uh, like water spraying at them from the misters and the pressurized ones make it more where it's uh, that atomizes the water droplets so it's more like it just changes the air temperature rather than spraying water on you but we'll see how they do with this see how well it works so it's a weird smell it smells like it smells like a swimming pool this is actually a lot more flexible than I expected Okay, I've gotten a good deal done, but um, it's been really hot. I'm not gonna lie. I've probably blacked out a couple, well, not blacked out, like passed out, but I've, you know, gotten lightheaded and stuff a couple times. I have heart problems. I don't know if you guys know that or not. Most, if you're a long time viewer, you probably know that. But doing things like this really gets to me. Um, so I took a little break, we're back out now, and uh, just try to finish the rest of the misting. I don't think I'm going to have enough length for, or as much length as I wanted for the misting. So, sorry, I'm like getting cut off by the frame. I can hardly see the screen too, because of the sun's reflection. But anyway, let's do it. Okay, let's turn it on and see what it looks like. Well, Kind of piss poor right now. Not really impressed. But there is a leak at the outlet, so um, I'm going to try to fix that and then we'll try again in a second. Well, I fixed the leak at the outlet, but there's just not enough pressure to go around this distance effectively. <sighs> I can't see this making a huge difference, if even any at all, unless they're like right under right underneath it. You know, like I was standing underneath it a second ago. I don't imagine this mist is going to make that much of a difference. We're going to need we're going to need a pump whether we need a, you know, like 200 PSI or 400 PSI or 1,000 PSI, I have no idea, but uh, that's going to be, you know, another $1,000 probably, unfortunately, at least that. Uh, and it's so damn hot out lately. It really needs to, really needs to come down a good... 20 degrees. Of course they do have, you know, shaded areas and stuff like that. And they'll have water and, you know, cold food and stuff like that, but it really needs a better system. 
which is unfortunate. Anyways, well, let's work on the next thing. Guys, I went to Lowe's here to get some uh, sheet metal screws to finish out everything. And I always go to the plant section, of course, if you go to places like this. And I walk over and what do I see? These leaves look very familiar. They have papaya trees here. I have never seen that locally here before, ever. Uh, definitely going to be picking some of these up. Let's see, there's the price on here. Okay, they're thirty dollars. We're gonna pick out a couple of the biggest ones for sure, and bring these with us. Let's see, the one gallons, thirteen dollars. Look at that. All right, we're gonna pick up some of these. All right, we need some metal screws to go into the framing, and probably some brackets as well. And look what we got. But yeah, and we need a tap and die and some WD-40. I'll tell you what. No, but seriously, we do need some self-tapping screws. <laughs> I just don't know which ones right now. Probably gonna get some of these and then probably some of these guys up here, the little bit larger ones, to go into those. Um, they are to be able to hold those branches up, the heavier ones especially. So, I only got two, um, two papaya trees, and uh, I know this video is going to totally come off like some crazed lunatic with ADHD did it, and uh, I just want to reassure everybody that that is entirely true. So, anyways, <laughs> um, two papayas, I, this may as well just be a, a good time for me to introduce everybody to the plants. Uh, pay no attention to Murder Shed or the trailer because the trailer's there because Murder Shed's about to ooh, go bye bye. Um, anyways, I only got two of these papayas because I wasn't sure what um, variant they are. Um, I know saying that word's probably going to give some people flashbacks, but. <laughs> Bad work. Anyways, um, we got, I have two windmill palms, actually found these for really cheap, like right by my house just by chance. A lot of these plants I found like just by some miracle for cheap, um, because these are usually quite expensive, and you guys have seen these in other videos too, but, uh, majesty palms, uh, same with these, the queen, I have two queen palms now. Um, I found at Home Depot for half off, and they were only $29 each, which was incredible, an incredible deal. Here's the other one right here. Um, you yeah, have grapes. I don't know what kind of grapes they are, but it was again on sale, and I was like, oh, well, yeah, let's do some grapes. Same with the fig tree here. I'll reposition these. We have two other fig trees in addition to this one, but this is the tallest one, and you can see there's actually one little fig coming in there. I get the leaf out of the way. Oh, uh, um, guava tree. Here, I'll show you this as my personal favorite. Here's the other queen palm here. Um, this is my personal favorite palm. Uh, I've been wanting to get one of these for a long time. It's an Alexandria palm. They're from Queensland, Australia, uh, but they grow these long, slender stalks that are just, are stalks, what am I trying to say? Uh, what the hell is it called when it's a palm tree? Trunk? Is it just a trunk? Um, anyways, uh, 
I don't know, they just look really beautiful as adults. This is a smaller one, but uh, hopefully it'll grow quickly. And then this I found, I wasn't planning on getting one of these, but this is a bottle palm. Um, also found it half off just by chance at Home Depot, and so I was like, yeah, I should pick that up because I don't have many opportunities to get that. And then there's the other windmill palm back there. Um, my other favorite, personal favorite tree, is uh, the Cecropia tree I have. These are a fruiting tree that are native to uh, Mexico, Central, and South America that toucans absolutely love. They have these fruits that grow and they look like fingers. Uh, they look like almost like little gummy worms. Like, I don't know. They look like fingers and gummy worms at the same time. It's hard to explain, but they have these big, beautiful leaves, and uh, the tree grows uh, fairly tall. Well, it, it won't here because we're not in its native environment, but I don't know. It's just a really beautiful tree. I want to get a bunch of these and try to get the fruits for the birds because uh, this is something they eat very commonly in the wild and something that's just not available here at all. Uh, anyways... Um, I wanted to get a couple of big pindo palms, but, um, uh, I couldn't find any locally that weren't just inc incredibly expensive. The only ones I can find are in Willis Point, Texas, um, that are relatively cheap, but I'd have to rent a car and go pick them up because there's no way they're going to deliver, like, big-ass palms all the way over here. It's like two and a half hour drive at least. Um, eventually I'll probably still do that because they're a species that is native to Brazil and also cold hardy and will grow here. And that may not be an issue if we cover this with um, that plastic I was talking about in one of the earlier videos to try to make it a greenhouse in the winter. We may not have to worry about trees being cold hardy. Um, I'm hoping it works out well if we do that, but at the very least, I did want to get those because I know they'll survive here. And they're very beautiful and they they produce fruits, they produce dates um, that are edible. The toucans eat them in the wild, they're native to their natural habitat. But uh, we'll just have to do it in due time. I'm going to go back inside for a while and try to cool down and uh, wait until the sun gets a little more behind the trees and then we'll I'll come out here and I'll screw the uh, perches and all, all the hardware that I went and got. Uh, hopefully it'll all work out, but I'll see you guys in a little bit.
I'm about to die out there. Um, came back in for a little bit. I got that second bracket done for the my freaking hair, man. I picked like the worst time to decide to grow my hair out. Um, the second uh, ring, mounting ring for the rope on the opposite side, I did off camera because my phone was about to die. Um, so I just, I came in here to get a breather and then we're going to go cut the rope and um, hang the rope up on the other side. So here we go. Okay. Oh. Okay, so I basically marked out where it's supposed to go up there with this vinyl tape and what we're going to do is uh, chop it with, oh, where's my balance, with this big, um, god my hair, oh shit, <laughs> this big uh, hedge, we're just going to cut it with this thing <laughs> and we're going to do the same thing. Um, that we did on the other side to this side. So here we go. If you know, if you guys know a better way to clamp, we're going to be using zip ties, but if you guys know a better way to clamp a, a rope, two inch rope, I couldn't find anything. Okay, almost threw off. Damn, this uh, might be too small for this rope. This rope is very thick. Flip it around to the other side. Last little bit does not want to go. There we go. <coughs> not the prettiest, but it'll get the job done. Okay, I wouldn't recommend doing that, but I don't have any pliers nearby. Okay. Oh, let's, uh, can we get a good...
sweating bullets but I felt like uh, I felt like Spider-Man trying to hold the train back <laughs> putting that stupid clamp on uh, let's hope all that holds I think it's about at the perfect height though I don't know what you guys think but uh, I probably want to put one more back there as well so uh. Well guys, it's about two days later, and I think we are ready to let birds out. Um, over the last few days, I replaced the misting system entirely. It's still a cheap misting system, but the other one just stopped working completely for some reason. So I had to run, uh, I had to drive about an hour and a half round trip today to go, uh, get some new misters because I didn't want to wait a whole week to get them on Amazon um, also set this up and put water in it overnight to make sure it would hold looks like it's holding just fine a little bath area I was thinking we'd put a camera like somewhere around here for streaming so people can see them drink and bathe and all that kind of stuff and then I want to make a little foraging area on this side So, and we'll have another camera over here, probably somewhere like right here or something. I think that would be about perfect. But let me know what you guys think. And we can set up some papaya foraging and stuff like that around here for them. Um, but yeah, I don't know, guys. Uh, what else did I do? Oh, uh, cleaned all the perches, got all the lichen and all that kind of stuff off of them, and just cleaned them like I would normally clean the perches. Um, power washing and uh, white vinegar with a coarse sponge um, I'll show you the sponge but I forgot that I took it back inside um, if you're cleaning perches make sure you don't use a wire brush because the wire can get embedded and stuck in the wood or the rope or whatever you're using and um, potentially get in the bird's feet we need to remove that that's left over from when it was up in the other area so i'll remove that before i put them out but i think this is about wraps it up guys i think i think it's just just about time to let them go so next video we'll be letting the birds out i might actually do that today and record the rest but uh we'll see how things go but we'll see you guys very soon and uh love you guys and what more can I say? Um, if you want to help uh, with the aviary more, because they're still, you know, we're still going to keep adding on to it over time. Uh, make sure to check out the links in the description. Support us on Patreon, memberships, or super thanks down below. Um, helps out exponentially, and uh, we can make this even better for the birds. So sorry there was no birds in the video this time, but there will be plenty of birds next time. But love you guys. Thank you guys so much for sticking with us and helping. And uh, I think this is just the beginning of a new chapter for us. So we'll see you soon.